let's start with the basics. Uh, for you, because you're actually doing it rather than talking about it, what is stakeholder capitalism? Well, stakeholder capitalism for me is finding a way to not only deliver great outcomes for shareholders, but doing right by workers and, and the climate. And I have to say there's tons of brilliant people working on climate issues. Obviously, it's critical. There's not enough people focused on labor. And so that's really my passion. A lot of it has to do with how I grew up. My dad was a construction worker for 40 years, earned an hourly wage, and really taught my sister and I around the dinner table what it's like being an hourly worker. You know, you don't have a voice. Nobody listens to you. There's no incentive alignment, and you have no stake in the outcome. So that ignited a passion in me from a very early age to think about these labor issues. And then when I became an investor, you know, wow, what an opportunity because you're responsible for all of these companies with all of these many employees. And if you can cascade change through a variety of and a number of companies, which private equity is well suited to do, you can impact, you know, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people. So that sounds fine, but you'll forgive me if many of us who don't understand private equity the way you do, don't associate that approach with private equity. We tend to think you go and you buy the company, you strip out costs, you leverage it up, you sell it. Yeah, well, look, private equity is not perfect. Uh, capitalism's not, not perfect. But this is a superior way of operating a company in every respect. You can align incentives, not just of the senior team, but of all of the employees help them create wealth for themselves and create a better culture. I mean, if you can figure out a way, and we think we're on the right path here, to have employees less likely to quit their jobs, more engaged on the job, you've got a better opportunity to deliver on value creation initiatives, which is the core of private equity. The core of private equity is transformation. Take a good business, make it great. And you're not going to be as effective as you could be in that effort if you don't have everyone aligned. So that sounds great. It also sounds fairly simple. Is it when you actually do it? Because often the implementation is where the tricky part lies. Yeah, it's incredibly difficult. Let me just define the program. The, the, the program that we've been working around around employee ownership is about much more than handing out stock. If it's just handing out stock, then we're in a compensation discussion, which is important, but that's not going to change cultures. Uh, as my friend Dove Seidman always says, you can triple people's compensation and not get ownership behaviors, which I think mm -hmm. is very true. So we are taking ownership as the foundation, as an ethos, and then on top of that, we are building a robust employee engagement effort, teaching financial literacy, opening up the business plan to all employees, financial information, sharing financials with all employees, and teaching basic corporate finance so they can understand the information being shared with them. All of this stuff taken together is what can move a culture. And to your point, it's hard. You know, day one, people say, I don't believe it. I don't believe I'm going to have a voice in my work. I don't believe this stock's ever going to be worth anything. To your point, I've read about private equity. You know, I'll believe it when I see it. Another challenge is CEOs are overwhelmed. A lot of CEOs will say to me, okay, let me just get this straight. You want me to double my profits. You want the financials by the 12th of the month, the metrics package by the 15th of the month. You want me to decarbonize, add diversity to the board, change the way I recruit so we add diversity deep into the organization. And now you want teach financial literacy, drive employee engagement, make everyone an owner in the business. You know, come on, Pete. What are the real priorities? And so CEOs are overwhelmed. The unlock is, and this, this enables all of it, is for CEOs to understand if you do these last four things right, it's going to make everything else uh, easier. So. No, it's not easy, but it's, it's worth the effort. Does it also hurt their cost structure? When you start talking about sharing and comp and things like that, does that actually add to their cost structure? Or do you offset in the compensation and the salary and benefits? Well, one important thing to understand is this is never a trade for wages and benefits. So we are, this is not about pushing risk onto workers. So we're not asking workers, here's some stock. Can we take some comp and benefits back? It's always incremental. It's always free. We're not asking workers to invest out of pocket. So to your question, is it a, and it's not an incremental fixed cost, it's, it's sharing in upside. So it's, there's no payout if there's no value creation. And in our experience, this pays for itself when it's done well, and I don't want to make it sound like it's easy, when you're patient and you put years of effort into this, this pays for itself many times over. Let me give you an example. So public company uh, that we bought in 2013 was called Gardner Denver. So we took it private in 2013. There were 6,000 employees at the company. Out of 6,000 people, 86 people had ownership, which is what we see typically. It's 1% to 5%. They had never done an employee engagement survey ever. 
massively high quit rates. When we started measuring engagement, 20% was the, we, we measured in the 20th percentile, according to Gallup. We brought in a new leadership team, totally changed the way the company ran. We shared openly the business plan, financials. We made huge improvements in things like worker safety. And when I give you the results, I, I want to stress this took us almost 10 years. But the engagement scores went from the 20th percentile to the 90th, hmm. and the quit rate went down 90%. So we were hiring 3,000 fewer people every year. Think of the benefits of that. Uh, uh, Pete, take us into one specific example I've read about, which is CHI. Tell us the story of CHI. Okay, CHI Overhead Doors is a manufacturer of garage doors uh, in central Illinois. We bought the business in 2015. We were the fourth private equity owner. So when we bought the business, there was a lot of, why would you buy? Smart people have owned this for 20 years. What could possibly be done with CHI Overhead Doors? A garage door company, doesn't sound that exciting. It's not a software business. Why are you guys doing this? And what had never been tried was engaging with the entirety of the workforce to transform the business operation. So we had a good company that could have been exceptional. And so this took us almost eight years, but over the course of eight years, created an ownership culture. So gave ownership to every employee, taught financial literacy. We brought in Operation Hope, a nonprofit foundation to work with us on that. Shared the business plan, shared financial information, had quarterly uh, owner meetings, and steadily over the course of these seven and a half, eight years, transformed the business culturally and operationally. So the, the EBITDA margins, the profit margins of the business over that period of time went from about 20% very solid for a building products company to 36%, mm. which is like a software business. People would have said, there's no way you can get to that level of profitability. And how that happened was a lot of small things that the workforce did that cumulatively added up to something big, reducing scrap, driving productivity, et cetera. Now at the end of this, and you really have to see a video to understand the power of this, employees participated in an amazing outcome. Our investors, in this deal in a garage door company, made 10 times their money, which is the best deal KKR has done in 30 years. When you hear the personal stories and you see the emotion in this program, that's when CEOs see that and they call us and say, I gotta do this for my people, we gotta, we gotta try this program. So that sounds fascinating and very encouraging. Are you seeing some uptake with some of the really big multinationals? Because it doesn't have to be for companies that are bought by, for PE that you have this transformation, right? I can imagine a big manufacturing company or a big consumer company saying, you know what, maybe we should learn something from that. Well, I'll give you one example, um, which Bloomberg wrote about. Uh, the CEO of Harley-Davidson called me and said, look, I've been brought in to turn Harley-Davidson around, Jochen Zeitz, he's the guy who turned Puma around, and he said, the challenge is we don't have the right relationship with our labor force and our union. And so can you work with me and our board to figure out how can we roll this program out? We get those kinds of calls frequently uh, at Ownership Works now to say, can you guys help us? This is an interesting idea, we wanna explore it. How do you structure these programs? How do you communicate them so they're effective? And then the most important thing is how do we take ownership and create it, become an, have it be an ethos, not just mm -hmm. here's some stock. How do we change the culture?